uh, Ambassador uh, William J. Vanden Heuvel. Uh, Hope and History is his new book, A Memoir of Tumultuous Times. Ambassador, welcome to the program. Thank you, Tom, very much. Glad to be here. Thanks so, so much for being with us. And uh, you have led an extraordinary life from your birth in 1930 up to today. I noticed in, in uh, you know, your first chapter is titled Growing Up in the Age of Roosevelt, and you have some just extraordinary stories there. But in your seventh chapter, you talk also about, you know, running for Congress in 1960 and Eleanor Roosevelt endorsing you. Um, you know, you, you worked with uh, Bobby Kennedy. I mean, you've, you have seen the arc of history in this country in a way that, that most of us have not. And I'm wondering what lessons you learned from the Great Depression, from Franklin Roosevelt's work, and all the stuff that has intervened to this day about today's politics, looking back. Well, Tom, <clears throat> I grew up in Rochester, New York, from an immigrant family. My mother and father had both emigrated to the United States and we barely spoke English at home. But it was a time, although the Depression was well underway, the arrival of President Roosevelt in the White House made the difference. They'd have a president who spoke to the concerns of the people directly, who was not afraid. I mean, the phrase that we often cite with Roosevelt, we have nothing to fear but fear itself, really had meaning to people who were fearful for their jobs, fearful for one of their homes. Almost everything was challenged because the Depression was so severe. But it was the Democratic Revolution that Roosevelt led that made the difference in America. And when we talk about the greatness of America, we should measure it really in the last 75 years when the liberal government that he established addressed itself to the needs of the people for the first time, really, in a very direct way. And so in our home, as in all the homes in Rochester, working-class families, Franklin, Mellon, and Roosevelt were two heroes. Yeah. And, and, and Roosevelt established a new direction for the Democratic Party in 1933. And, uh, you know, although Democrats had been, you know, at least opposed to Harding and Coolidge and, and uh, you know, and, and whatnot, you know, through, through that era, uh, and Hoover, ultimately. But um, it seems that the Democratic Party has disengaged in many regards from Roosevelt's visions. I mean, his, his suggestion for a second Bill of Rights that would guarantee as a right health care, for example, and a job and education. Um, you know, Lyndon Johnson kind of brought some of that stuff to the fore with the Great Society. Uh, do you... Lyndon, go ahead. Lyndon Johnson did a great job in continuing the New Deal. But the president, President Roosevelt, in 1944, in his last State of the Union address, outlined the second Bill of Rights that included health care, that included a decent home, included a decent job. Now, you don't get these things by just pushing a button. You get these things by making it the focus of your party and of your own individual leadership. And this was the world that Roosevelt said we had to create to justify the terrible cruelty and losses of the Second World War. And that's when he enunciated the Four Freedoms as well, in January of 1941, before the United States was in the war. Roosevelt went to the nation and said, these are times that would probably involve us in this terrible war. But the only thing that can justify the losses of our children and the losses of the treasure of our nations is that we're going to create a different world. Yeah. The world he set out to create was a world based on the four freedoms, a world that was based on cooperation, working together with nations, and offering freedom and justice to everyone. Your daughter, Katrina Van uh, publishes uh, published the, the Nation magazine and has been a real champion for progressive causes all these years. And, and I, it, it seems that... You know, Jimmy Carter was the, 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 you know, the first Democratic president after the, after the Great Society and, um, you know, was trying to reprise parts of it. But uh, ever since then, it seems like much of the Democratic Party has kind of lost its way. And we've seen this bifurcation um, that was, you know, super on display in the 2016 election and the Hillary versus Bernie stuff. Um, where do you see the Democratic Party going? I mean, you've known so many from, from Eleanor Roosevelt through Bobby Kennedy you worked with. You've known, you have been so inside and, and so known these people. Where do we go with this? I think you have to have a president and, or a presidential candidate before you can truly focus where the party is and what it's saying. 
<laughs> it makes all the difference in the world. And if you if you have a conservative Democrat, then you have that going in that direction. Roosevelt was a great, sincere, progressive, liberal president. And Mrs. Roosevelt herself was a nation's leader. But I think that today you're going to find a definition of who we are by who emerges as our leaders in the primary elections that are to come. I mean, Nancy Pelosi is certainly a liberal leader. Yes. And I, as I think of the judge, with the many, she's an extraordinarily effective leader in the House of Representatives. But we're going to have to live through the next year to see the 23 candidates in action. And a lot's going to happen that we can predict. And we've got good and bad things are going to happen. So that by the time we get to the fight where we have a candidate against Trump, uh, we're going to have learned a lot. We're talking to Ambassador William J. Vandenhoevel, his new book, Hope and History, a memoir of tumultuous times, which is just an extraordinary look into, the, into the, the, this arc of history of the United States. Um, you know, you made, you made reference, John, to Carter's presidency yes. and then the decline of progressive government. That one of the problems was that Lyndon Johnson left us not only with extraordinary accomplishments in the fields of so many human needs, but he left us with Vietnam. Yes. And Vietnam, I think, took a great deal of the energy and direction out of the Democratic Party. To what extent do you think that the assassination of Bobby Kennedy did the same thing? Oh, terrible. You know, what America went through in those five years in the 60s, first starting with the assassination of President Kennedy, itself one of the most profound traumatic shocks that America had ever experienced. And then the murder of Martin Luther King, and then the assassination of Robert Kennedy. It was as though you wiped out the leadership, the generation of leadership. Robert Kennedy would have made a great president. He was tough. He was smart. He was resilient. He was compassionate. He had a sense of, of the needs of our people's nation. He had a sense of the terrible aspect of racial dimensions in American life. And I think he would have done so much in many ways to bring the country together to unite it and to give it purpose. We're, uh, Ambassador Vanden Heuvel, we, we have just a minute until we're going to hit a hard break here and, and have to wrap this up. I'm wondering, what, what is the main message that you would like to convey to people with your new book, Hope and History? I think we have to understand we live in a totally different age, and one of the great enemies of democracy is war. We have to stop endless wars in this world where we're involved, and whether we're involved or not. And then we have to confront our racial dilemma that's been part of the 300 years of American history on this continent and understand that what we have to do to try to bring true opportunity and decency to the lives of all Americans. And I think perhaps more than anything, we need to put in the White House a president who speaks the truth. The great enemy of democracy is falsehood. And unless the president himself is committed to truth, then I think the nation's democratic values are in jeopardy.